show our channel. Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I was born in 384 BC, and I died 322 BC. I was a Greek philosopher, I, I was a student of Plato, and I taught Alexander the Great. Um, I wrote on a couple of subjects. Some of these were metaphysics, poetry, physics, theatre, music, logic, rhetoric, and some others. And now, what are your thoughts on motion? Well, I have a theory that the Earth is made up of five elements. Fire, hot and dry. Earth, cold and dry. Air, hot and wet. And water, which is cold and wet. And the aether, which is the divine um, substance that makes up the heavens and all the, all the heavenly bodies like stars and planets and all the other stuff in space. Well, that had nothing to do with motion. What do you know about motion? Well, each of these elements has its own place in the world. All right, we have the earth at the center, and the water, and then air, then fire. And then you have the heavens, which makes up all the circular motion outside. Okay, now I get it. Well, what were some of the conventions of your time? Well, but the common people didn't really have much of an idea about motion and space and all, all that. So, And I was one of the first to bring philosophy into the average life. People started listening to me and started to bring their theories into just common knowledge, and I was one of the first to bring that in. Your turn, Mr. Galileo. Well, hello, I am Galileo. I was uh, born on, um, on uh, 15th of February, 1564, and I sadly passed away on 1642, and um, I was a Tuscan physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and also a philosopher. I also played a major role in the scientific revolution. And what are your thoughts on motion? Well, I also determined the correct mathematical law for acceleration. The total distance covered, starting from rest, is proportional to the square of the time. I also know that a pendulum swing t almost takes the same amount of time. Always takes the same amount of time, independently of the amplitude. The story goes that I came to this conclusion by watching the swings of the bronze chandelier in the Cathedral of Pisa, using my pulse to time it, while Galileo... <laughs> <laughs> while I believed this quality of period to be exact, it is only an approximation appropriate to small amplitudes. It is good enough to regulate a clock as I may have been the first to realise. Good. Now, Mr. Newton? Well, I was one of the greatest scientists and, ma and mathematicians that ever lived. I was born in England on December 25th, 1643. I was born the same year that Galileo died. I lived for 85 years. I was, attended, I was raised by my grandmother and attended free grammar school and then went on to Trinity College, Cambridge. And what are your thoughts on motion? My first law of motion is that an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. An object in motion continues in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless, unless acted on by an unbalanced force. This law is often called the law of inertia. My second law of motion is that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of the force needed to accelerate the object. Everyone unconsciously knows the second law. Everyone knows that heavier objects require more force to move the same distance as lighter objects. My third law of motion is that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Einstein, your turn, bro. I'm Albert Einstein, and I was born in 1879, and I died in 1955 in Germany. I was a theoretical physicist, and I was best known for my theory of relativity and mass-energy equivalence. In 1921, I received the Nobel Prize in Physics for my service to theoretical physics, as well as my discovery of the law of photoelectric energy. And what are your thoughts on motion? I developed the theory of general relativity between the years of 1907 to 1915. 
The development of general relativity began with the equivalence principle, under which the states of accelerated motion and being at rest in a gravitational field, for example when standing on the surface of the Earth, are physically identical. Thanks, Einstein. Thanks for listening, everyone.